Kim Al. Two balls and a strike the count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk him up. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeff Spiegel, joined today by DodgerBlue.com's Blake Williams. And Blake, the Dodgers had a deadline for arbitration uh, stuff last week. They had 10 players due up for arbitration. Nine of the 10 come to an agreement. Tony Gonsolin, the lone holdout. The Dodgers reportedly offering him $3 million. He was looking for 3.4. They were unable to come to an agreement, which now means there will be a hearing scheduled. They could still come to an agreement ahead of that hearing, but we are two to four weeks away from a potential hearing. Obviously, Gonsolin is going to be a Dodger next year, but is this big deal or no deal that they couldn't come to an agreement? I don't think it's really a big deal. These happen all the time with players, and usually they end up settling before the hearing because no one wants to go through that, the player or the team. It's just kind of belittling to both of them. So they'll probably get a deal done, meet somewhere in the middle, like $3.2 million and call it a day. It's just more of a nuance that they didn't get it done yet. Yeah, and, and Gonsolin, 28, almost 29 years old, but this is a guy who's not going to be a free agent until 2027 because he is a Super 2 player. And it's an interesting situation. He's coming off his best year of his career, 2.14 ERA across 24 starts, 2.7 wins above replacement. You look at the stat cast, almost everything on his page there is light red to dark red. And yet this is the arbitration process. We're talking about 3 or $3.4 million for a guy like Gonsolin, something you and I talked about just before coming on. If you were Andrew Friedman and the Dodgers, would you consider trying to sign a three or four year contract here maybe buy out the rest of his arbitration years give Gonsolin a little bit of guaranteed money in exchange for a discount would that be something you would be interested if you were the Dodgers yeah if he's willing to take it I think you have to talk about it like we've seen the Braves do this a lot they're going out and getting really good deals on star players because they're buying up arbitration years and then they get a year or two of free agency from them and you get Ronald Acuna signing for 100 million so it's usually beneficial to the team and it guarantees money to the player. So it can work out for both sides and it's something they should explore. Yeah, for Gonsolin, it's interesting because we mentioned, I mean, he's not going to hit free agency until he's like 33 or 34 years old. So unfortunately for him, he's basically on one-year contracts every year for the next four years as a pitcher who's above average age-wise for guys in his position and who's had some shoulder injuries. I would imagine that he would be interested in signing like th- something like that potentially because he needs to guarantee himself some money. If Gonsolin were to get hurt this year or next year and have some terrible injury to his shoulder or to his elbow, the Dodgers could just move on at no cost to them, and it would prevent Gonsolin from making some money down the road. So you kind of do the math. We're talking about three-ish million dollars this year. We're talking about five or six probably next year, maybe eight to ten the year after that, and then maybe ten to twelve after that. You kind of add all those numbers up and subtract a little bit if you're the Dodgers and maybe you can get a discount on a four-year deal or even a five-year deal and buy out that first year of free agency for Gonsolin. The caveat or the catch, I should say, to all of that is if the Dodgers are worried about the competitive balance threshold this year, signing a long-term deal would hurt them this year because rather than a 3 or a $3.4 million AAV on the 2023 books, we'd be talking about a 6 7 maybe $8 million AAV on the books this year. And so Maybe that's what's part of what's going into this. Maybe the the lull in negotiations here is because they're working on a long-term deal, but I'm with you at the end of the day. Not a big deal. He's going to be a Dodger next year, barring some crazy trade, which I don't foresee happening. And so I know it doesn't look good when you see nine of 10 Dodgers come to agreement. Tony Gonsolin doesn't, but this is just the way this system works at some point. Um, so... Let us know what you think in the comments below. I know Tony Gonsolin has become sort of a polarizing figure in Dodgers circles. Lots of times we do these live shows. People want him traded. That's not the the, the boat that I'm in, Blake. I imagine you're not a trade Tony Gonsolin guy. No, he's too talented. He's too cheap for how good he is. You have to keep him unless you're getting a legit superstar back, which they're not going to. Yeah, a guy that's not going to be a free agent until 2027 
and who just had a 2.14 ERA in 24 starts last season. Uh, that feels like the type of guy that you're hoping to get and, and to keep around for as long as possible. That's Blake Williams. I'm Jeff Spiegel. As always, thanks for joining us. Make sure you check out DodgerBlue.com where you can read Blake's work, among other writers. Check out DodgerBlue1958 on social media. If you're a podcast person, please, wherever you get your podcasts, subscribe, rate, review the Dodger Heads podcast. We would greatly appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day, and as always, go Dodgers.